All right, hey there everybody. This is my first video with Axe Edit 3. Let's get stuck into it. I want to show you guys what is new in the Axe FX 3 as well as Axe Edit 3. So let's get straight into it. In order to create a signal flow in this, what you have to do, unlike the Axe FX 2, you don't have the input and output block uh, over here. You just basically can put inputs and outputs anyway. So at the moment, all I'm doing, I'm going into input number one. So let's select input and we should have input number one, which is awesome. And then I'll put output number one, because that's the only output that I'm using over here. And then we can easily connect them with a cable and we will hear DI guitar. So that's very, very cool. I like that a lot. And what we can do from there is you can see in output number two, it actually gives you a live meter on the left and right channel. And the input channel, you can see you can adjust the input gate and there's also an input. Meter there, which is pretty cool. So I like the stock gate settings, they're pretty good. Let's just get straight into this and I'm gonna select an amp. We can select between two amp blocks, which is really awesome. I'm gonna select a cab as well. And there are just so many cabs in here. I really like this cab lab style cab picker, which is pretty cool. And with the amp block, you know, where you saw all this kind of thing, you can see straight away channels. This is a brand new feature, which I think is just amazing. And it really, really makes the ax even more powerful than it initially seems to the eye. You can see we've got four different channels, meaning four different amps that we can select between, and the same thing, four different cab channels. So let's just sort of go into this cab picker. I'm gonna go, uh, what should we select? Let's go factory. Actually, I've got a user cab in here that I uploaded, so I'm gonna use my Hammerspace user cab, just in number one, really, really easy. We can go into the preamp section. I'm just gonna set the low cut to 80 hertz. Really easy and whoops, press the wrong button. So there we go. And then the amp, I'm gonna select the, ooh, what should we do this time? Let's select something cool. Um, we can use the Atomica, I really like that one. Actually, I'm gonna use the USA 2C++ because I love this amp. So if you're not familiar with the Mesa Mark series amps, basically this is how I set them. I crank the overdrive all the way up and set the bass and the middle quite low. And then I'll set the treble, say to around six or seven, maybe seven in this case. And then in the output EQ section, we've got the Mark series EQ. So I like to add quite a bit of bass and then scoop out 240 and 750, kind of the way you would set the real amp. And then I'll add lots of this guy and I'll add a bit of 6600. The other thing that I tweak on these before I even go is I turn the presence down too. So this should be a pretty happening rock guitar sound right now. <laughs> All I might do is turn the master volume down just because I think these amps sound a little bit better with the master slightly lower. which is pretty cool. So that's my first channel. Uh, if I wanted to add a different amp on another channel, I could simply select channel B. And on this one, let's do something completely different. Let's use like a Fender or something like that. Might go with the, uh, let's say the Tweed Deluxe. That's a pretty cool one. I'll use similar settings. I'll set the bass nice and low. Kind of these Fender Magic 6 settings more or less. I'll turn the input drive down though. And let's have a listen to the Tweed Deluxe. <laughs> That's pretty cool. I might add a little bit of speaker drive to this thing actually. So the speaker compression, I might take that up to about five. And you can see you've got a gain meter here, which is great. So I like that. I also like to crank the uh, supply sag with these amps just cause. So that is still running through my V30 cab. Maybe I'll set a different channel and select a different impulse. Let's go to, we'll say with factory number one, 
And let's choose like, a, I don't know, a one by eight or something like that, just cause we've got a couple of these different tweeds or maybe a one by 10, that might be a more appropriate choice for this kind of thing. Uh, let's have a listen, just something, yeah, this one. <laughs> That's kind of got that signature sizzle to it. Uh, what I might do though is unmute this other cab here and I'll select a different factory cab to blend in. Let's stick with these one by tens, but I'll go with like a 121 shot. So this is blending in basically a bit of ribbon mic. I'll set the level maybe to minus nine. <laughs> kind of take some of that sizzle out of it, but I think that sounds really good. There we go. So on channel B, I've got this kind of blend of a 57 and a 121 on a 1x10 speaker. And on channel A, I have got my user impulse, which is a 4x12 with V30s. So what we can do now, let's say I want to save this and I can name it up here, which is cool. So I just call this like, say, call it C++ slash tweed or something like that, which is pretty cool. All right, and then I can name the first scene. So this can be my C++ rhythm, which is pretty cool. And then on scene two, what I'm gonna do is have scene two swap so that the amp goes to channel B and the cab goes to channel B. I'll set those, I'll save them, and I'll name this one here, Tweed. So what I'm able to do now, have a listen to this, I can be on my Tweed sound and then switch to scene number one and I've got my Mesa Mark series tone. <laughs> That's wicked. If I wanted a third scene, I might stick with this hammer space IR. So I'll leave the channel on A, but you know, let's dial up a different amp. Let's use like, oh, I was talking about the Atomica before. So let's use the Atomica. So stock settings on the Atomica sounds great to me. <laughs> I just turn the treble down a little bit. So that's pretty cool. That to me needs like a boost in the front. So I could chuck a drive block right here or I can use the input EQ or the input boost, which is pretty cool. So you can see down here in the preamp section, I can go to input boost. And you know, say I wanted to boost this amp with a Boss Super Overdrive with the drive at zero and the level at 10. This input boost section, which is new to the amp block, lets me do that. So let's have a listen to that. <laughs> So this can be my scene three. I'll save this as Atomica, which is a great sound to me. I can save that. The alternative to using the input boost is I could go to the input EQ and I could do something like this. Let's set the low cut say to about 100 Hertz and then I will crank 800 Hertz by six dB. Let's have a listen to that. <laughs> That's kind of an alternative to the boost section there. And this is great because it lets me shape the pre-gain. When I was using the USA 2C++, if I go back over to that channel, these controls are pre-overdrive. So what they do is they shape the pre-EQ, which is going to shape your gain control. And on the Atomica, these controls are post gain. So they work in a very different fashion. These work kind of like the graphic EQ does on the Mark series. So this input EQ essentially lets me have like a Mark series tone stack. Well, not really a Mark series tone stack, but it lets me shape the gain a little bit more, which I really, really like. Again, that's a really cool feature that I dig. So that is all happening in the amp block. You can see we've got the channels in the cab section. We've got the wicked cab selector, which lets you go through, you know, you've got two factory banks, a legacy bank and user bank. So there's more than enough for most people's IR collections in there. We also have this preamp section, which is kind of cool, which will let you emulate, you know, favorite 
you know, famous channel strips. So if we set it to high quality and I might add, say we set the saturation to four so we can really hear it and we'll add, oh, I don't know, let's go, let's try some of these tapes. Let's have a listen to the stock sound and then we'll just have a scroll through and see what it does. <laughs> That's kind of cool. You can further tweak your like post EQ tone with that. I actually like a little bit of saturation there, so I'm going to leave it. The other thing which I like is this room control. So uh, on the AX8, I was using a reverb block with a very, very short decay, basically to simulate a bit of a room sound. But if we crank this one all the way, this is what it sounds like. <laughs> That to me is like a thickening control. So I like that at about 30%. I don't really play around with the air too much, but the cab block is super, super powerful. It's so cool. You know, if I wanted to blend in a different IR with this and I could do it, I could have four more slots in there, which is amazing. So I'm pretty happy with that user IR at the moment. So that's the amp and the cab block. And as you can see, you can do, this would probably take me, you know, if I wanted to do all the things that I'm doing at the moment, a parametric EQ and a drive before the amp, and then like another parametric EQ and either like a compressor or a drive block set to the tape block or something like that after the cab. So it's saving four blocks, even though the CPU is less than 20% at the moment. So even though there's so much raw power, we can also streamline everything so much which I think is so cool and so clever so that has impressed me right out of the box with the axe obviously then we have got all these different effects to play around with which is so so amazingly cool so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to scene two we've got this tweed sound right And you might want to add some kind of overdrive in the front of that. Say we use the Blues OD, which I think sounds really good. Let's dial that one up. And with the Blues OD, I like to set the tone all the way off. And I'll just basically add a little bit of level and turn the drive down a bit. It sounds like this. If I wanted a fuzz, I could just use a different channel. For example, let's go with the fuzz face. If I wanted something like a metal zone, <laughs> why not play a metal zone into a Tweed Deluxe? We'll just put all the controls on 10, man, because, you know, that's what a metal zone does, right? <laughs> if you can find a use for that tone. And then on channel D, I could have, you know, just a clean boost. For example, if I use the FET boost, I can kind of set it to these clon style settings where I turn the high cut down. I'm gonna bump the mids a little bit. I'll crank the level up and turn the drive down, turn the tone up a little bit, and then I'll set the clip tight to germanium. And this sounds really nice. <laughs> which is pretty cool. And for this setting, uh, there's no room on channel B. So I'm actually gonna turn the room right up to about 60%. I'll make the size even bigger. which I think sounds really cool and really vintage. And of course, I can just go back to scene one and I've got my brutal uh, C++ rhythm. I'm gonna turn the drive block off there and save that. Or I can go to scene three and I've got the Atomica.
So that is something I really like. One last thing in the amp block as well, you can see we can now assign modifiers to the input boost, cut, fat switch. So what I'm gonna do is right click here and I'm gonna assign the fat switch to control switch number one, which is pretty cool. So then what I can do is in my C++ preset, what I can do is let's maybe save this one to scene four. So in scene four, I'm gonna have amp channel A and I'm gonna have cab channel A I'm gonna have the drive block off, but I want the fat switch on. So in the controllers menu, I can go to control switch per scene. I'm on control switch one on scene four. I'm gonna turn that on, which is pretty awesome. So now I can go from scene one, which is just my straight C++ rhythm sound. <laughs> And I've got the fat switch on. That's something I have wanted implemented on the AX8 for ages and it makes me so happy to have it now. So that's super cool. And I can also assign you know, a scene controller to the input drive if I wanted to do that or something like that. We won't get into that right now. So that's the amp and all the pre-gain stuff. What I love about this unit is the delay section. So let's dial up a multi-tap delay because there are a few new features in the multi-tap delay that I love. Basically, I mean, straight up, it sounds great. Have a listen. What we can do is we can add chorus to any of those delay lines. So what I would do in this kind of setting is, okay, I'm gonna set delay one and two. I'll turn the tempo off. And these are essentially gonna be my chorus lines. I'll set the feedback to zero. And then I'm going to go for a very short chorus time, say three milliseconds here and five milliseconds on the other one. On delay three and four, I'm going to set that to a dotted eighth note and a quarter note, which is pretty cool. And then I will turn the feedback up on these. So this is going to be like my delay part of the sound. And then the delay one and two, I'm going to add chorus to them. And you get this beautiful diffuse chorus kind of sound happening. So if that guy's at about 20%, let's set that one to about 12. So they've got similar amounts of decay. I'm going to set the high cut to about 5,000 Hertz. And I might turn the mix up, say to 30%. At the moment, it sounds like this. Which is a nice thick stereo delay. But in the chorus section, to chorus number one, which acts on delay line number one, I'll add about 10% and let's add about 20% on number two. Have a listen to this. If I wanted, I could increase the rate on chorus number one. And that is one block that's doing the chorus and the stereo delay and the delay lines are independent and I can add as much chorus as I like. And if I want, I can add diffusion to all of that. So have a listen to when I crank the diffusion. <laughs> You're getting that Lukather style, you know, lexicon PCM 70. Is it a delay? Is it a reverb kind of thing? That's just one block. And if I want, I can add another multi-tap delay. I could add any of these four delay lines in there. I'm just gonna chuck them into the grid. I'm not necessarily gonna connect them. Look at the CPU. It's hovering, you know, at the moment, what is it, about 40%? Yeah, I can add as many delays as I like. You know what? I wanna add a reverb to all of this, a high quality reverb as well. So let's add one reverb. We'll set it to high. Let's just go with, uh, I don't know, a large hall, because that's a cool kind of thing. I'll only add about 8%. Sounds like this. <laughs> And if I wanted to, I could have another reverb in parallel doing something completely different, which is awesome. Uh, for example, let's just chuck that reverb in there. Look at the CPU, it's only at about 60%. I could add another amp block down here as well. I would go totally crazy. The CPU is at 63%. I could keep going and add more cabs, add more effects, and the Axe FX3 is handling it. This is just 
an insanely powerful machine. Oh, and by the way, you know, not only am I adding a reverb, I can have four different channels on the reverb and four different channels on all of these blocks. So uh, that just blows me away how powerful this is. Like it is just unprecedented being able to do this. Um, yeah, I'm actually kind of speechless. I would never use that much CPU, but I guess another advantage would be, for example, if you had another guitar and you were playing in a multi-guitar band, you could have two separate rigs running through this. For example, you're going to input number two. I'm going to have input number two down here. I could plug another guitar in. I could connect it up, say, over here and have output number two totally independent of all of this. So output number two, and I could have a different guitar plugged in with a different amp, which is pretty awesome. So I'm going to amp two, cab two, effects for all of this. These two aren't even talking to one another. It's independent. And, uh, you know, if I was running DI bass or keys or something, I could put that on input number three and output number three and add effects to that. There's the headroom there, which is pretty awesome. So yeah, I'm getting a little bit excited about this. I haven't even had it for a day and I'm already thinking about ways I could run this for different gigs and different rigs and having the four ins and outs is pretty amazing. So like I said, with the reverb, maybe on channel B, what we'll do, let's set that to just a spring reverb, say large spring. And that can be, well, I'll have my hall reverb on scene number four. This can be my C++ lead, which is pretty cool. And as you can see, minimal blocks, maximum power. I really like that. Uh, scene two, which was my tweed model, I'll have the reverb go to channel B. Save that. Have a listen to this now. I'm going to turn the multi-delay off on the second scene. <laughs> And the switching there is really fast, but if I was just using this uh, on my own as the only guitar player, what you could do is add another amp block and you could just have these mute on and off and that way you're going to get actual gapless switching, which is pretty awesome. So there's just a couple of the features of the Axe FX3. I'm getting more and more excited the longer I do this video, so I'm actually going to stop the video so you guys aren't here for two hours listening to me babble on about it. But yeah, just look at the effects list. You know, we've got, not only do we have two multi-tap delays, we've got a plex delay, two of them. We've got two synth blocks. We've got two 10 tap delays. We've got four standard delay blocks. We've got two flanges. We've got two choruses. Actually, while we're with the chorus, let's just have a listen to the tri chorus because, you know, everybody's been pining for this one. So, stereo tri chorus, stock settings with this kind of atomica sound. Let's turn the multi delay and the reverb off. Have a listen to this. It's beautiful. <laughs> So one last thing there, there's a tri-chorus. If I use this with a clean amp, it's going to be absolute heaven. And there we go. That is just the tip of the iceberg with this machine. I'm going to go through and do some detailed tutorials on different amps and different effect types. But hopefully this gets you excited about the Axe FX3 as I am right now. I'm going to go and play a bunch of guitar. I will see you guys very soon. If you like the video, please hit subscribe. There's going to be plenty more of these coming up and I will see you around.